Hi, I'm Amy Griffiths and I'm a journalist in the Manx Radio newsroom. And we're asking if the hospitality sector is in crisis on the Isle of Man. Local businesses have been sharing their concerns about the future of the industry. We've been hearing from Andy Saunders of the Licensed Victuallers Association, Carl Jockin from the Mitre Hotel in Ramsey, Johnny McDowell from New Cod on the Block in Onken, and then Enterprise Minister Tim Johnston and the Chief Minister Alfred Cannon. My name is Andy Saunders. I am from Quids Inn and I also am a committee member of the Isle of Man Licensed Fitchers Association and immediate past chairman. Unfortunately, Beth, we've seen hundreds of small businesses on the Isle of Man go to the wall recently and very many of them are not going to the wall because of issues brought on to themselves. It's because of the cost of doing business on the Isle of Man and we've felt the need to get everybody, particularly in our hospitality industry together, because obviously we can't talk for all other industries, though we do feel we speak from the same sheet as many, many other small Manx businesses. And we had to get everybody together to discuss how we thought we could approach government to have them attempt to help us properly, as opposed to make platitudes about being willing to speak and then press releases before even speaking to us. Would you be able to put it into layman's terms what it is that business over here actually wants to see happen? Yeah, I think there's six clear areas where government can help our businesses. First of all, VAT, we understand how difficult that is for government, but it's also not impossible as they continue to put out continuously. We have two other Crown dependencies very close to us, Jersey and Guernsey, who have much, much lower rates of sales tax. They do have a higher population though. They do indeed. But to say that we can't work on VAT is not correct. It's a challenge that the government don't want to work on rather than won't work on. There are other ways they could work on VAT as well. But while that is a huge point for our businesses and 20% of all of our turnover basically goes straight to government on that, there are other issues that could be addressed as well. We've got issues with are not allowing people to flourish. In particular, national insurance is one of my problems and staffing issues arise from that as well as people aren't taking on more hours because of the cost of taxation and national insurance is a major issue. It seems quite ridiculous to me that a minimum wage earner doing a standard week of work ends up in our highest tax bracket, which currently stands at 22%. just want to go back to the VAT issue because some people may say, why should it just be this sector that this applies to then? This would have to happen across the board and surely then you can see the financial issues this would pose for government. The financial issues of government aren't really about businesses that are generating income, are they? The bloat in our government and the mismanagement of our public monies. That's where the real issues come. These other things could be addressed if the government got their side right. The reality is though that government needs to make money and it does this as you mentioned we've got the VAT, National Insurance which goes towards the essential services that we all need. If you cut those what guarantee is there that we're going to be able to afford the essentials that we do need to live here on the Isle of Man? Well the drive to the drive to a better, better economy will produce more money as well. How? Because, because if we can build up our tourism trades and so on again, get to hospitality, the money will come in in other sectors. The government have squandered an awful lot of our money already. We are at a stage where the economy is crumbling around us. We need support for Manx businesses. And how that comes, we've issued many, many different ways of how the government can help. They don't appear to want to help in many situations. And how have those approaches for discussions taken place until now, would you say? We've been in constant discussion. I mean, the hospitality industry on the island, I would suspect that very few of them had had any contact at all with government before the start of the major works around the uh, towns and then the COVID crisis. And many times, and I heard our minister today on the radio saying that they're giving plenty of support into business through COVID. If you look at those figures, the vast majority of that was not support to our businesses. It was support to our, our staff, which we were very appreciative of. But the vast 
majority of money that went into the hospitality industry went directly in salary support at a time when we were closed. We were closed by law. And I suppose, again, people might say, you know, there is just a reality of the situations that many people have had to face over the past few years. And of course, I know you would say it's not just your industry, but that's what we're primarily focused on. You know, some of this, it's not all government's fault, surely. The vast majority of it, of this is government's fault. There's nothing in these policies that are really unique or new and haven't been discussed before with government. And the answers keep coming back. No, no. We, we've now had this situation where we've had a minister go out because we called a meeting, go out and go straight on the offensive against us. It's not a great place where we are at with our government, unfortunately. We really want to see help so that all small manx businesses and people and lower wage earners and so on are starting to see some of the benefits of what has been a very successful economy over all of these years, but doesn't seem to be helping our small businesses and our people who are really the backbone of everything that happens on the Isle of Man. The LVA, something else that's been highlighted is the regulatory and training burdens, as it's been described on employers. I'm just quoting directly from the media yeah. release here. It says, we are mm-hmm. small business owners. Our focus should be customers, employees and suppliers. Surely, though, it's not unreasonable to expect someone who's got gone into the line of opening business to be business-minded. Yeah, to, to be business-minded, not to have regulatory issues put on top of them. When we talk about training and so on, we're talking about really complex ways of gaining some support for the training. Now, the government have put in place regulations recently that have put a massive increase on training, in particular in our industry. There are support for that. But it's so poorly organised that most people can't actually end up getting the support. That's what we're calling for there, for them to streamline those sorts of issues, which will take a lot of work out of the government's basket as well, because they won't have to have people uh, supervising these schemes and so on. OK, Andy, so if you were to be able to wave a magic wand right now and put it all right as far as you see it, what would be the first steps you'd take? The first step was to, to be a bit more a braver approach to how we deal and generate income on this island. That sounds like quite a big task though, doesn't it? It does. And in terms of the meeting yesterday, uh, what was the conclusion of that? How are things going to move forward from this point? All of the points that were put in the press release were discussed and debated thoroughly at the meeting. There were around 100 people there, which is a massive meeting, as you know, for the Isle of Man. And 74 businesses came along. There were over 50 businesses that sent their apologies for not being able to attend. And there were plenty of businesses who have just unfortunately lost their battles, who would have loved to be along to still support us. And every one of those points was voted on and was unanimously passed. We have got to now make that case strongly to government, get government to get us into a room instead of discussing with us in the press or in making announcements in the press before they discuss things with us and then see if we can work together to improve the plight of small businesses on the Isle of Man. How prepared yeah. would you be, would the industry be, to compromise? There is always room to talk and work together. Unfortunately, we've spent plenty of years talking and working together with government and what we've seen is our industry be decimated. And not just our industry, but so many small local Manx businesses going to the wall and big ones going to the wall. And that's because of poor management from not the size of the businesses, from the way that our economy is structured at the moment. But surely if some businesses are able to survive, surely some of that responsibility has to be with the business owners as well. Of course it does, but we're not talking about every business must be unable to fail. But look at the businesses that have been failing. Huge Manx businesses, the cornerstones of our economy. Any more meetings planned then, Andy? Yes, there will be other meetings and we will. And we have approached and in talks with the government to have a meeting with the relevant ministers and their civil servant backers. And I hope that this will be the start of better working relationships between the government and hospitality and other small industries where we can have a proper working relationship where growth will come, not just for our industries, but also for the whole island. My name's Carl Jockin. I'm the landlord of the Mitre Hotel in Ramsey. My personal situation, um, so I, I've, I've been in business at the Mitre for 12 years and it's, you know, that was from scratch. So it's always been a, about building up a momentum and, you know, increasing the business. In 2019, I bought my sister out uh, of her part of the partnership whilst investing in the business. 
um, in the latter part of that year. And then COVID kind of came at a very difficult time. Well, it's just bad timing, uh, really. And um, we're still paying off COVID and everything that's happened since since COVID, it has been very difficult to turn over into profit due to increasing um, overheads and um, staff difficulties and uh, just the change in the way that people use the pub, especially with the economic situation over the last couple of years. And what kind of challenges have this wider global context had for you? Um, Obviously, the increased energy costs has been a, a massive factor. Brexit has played a part. You know, it's very difficult now to um, recruit people to work in the industry and then the industry. So it makes it very difficult to to keep the high standards and to have a strong continuity through lots of difficult, you know, periods. For example, my uh, chef went on maternity leave in August and and I wasn't able to recruit her with um, somebody that was suitable for the role. And and then obviously with understanding that it was going to be a very difficult winter, I decided to not open the kitchen for six months and until I was able to recruit that position. Since then, my chef has come back from maternity leave and we've decided to operate on uh, Friday, Saturday and Sunday lunches only. And she's going to work part time during the week because that's where it would be a bit more, well, more profitable and worthwhile to have some of the kitchen running with the operating costs and with the footfall that would be coming through the business. The LVA has released a press release today making a number of calls on the government, so including things like um, reviewing VAT and tax thresholds and a raft of other measures. But how much of it is government's responsibility to actually step in here and provide help to the industry? I mean, we heard from the Enterprise Minister saying that actually they can't support individuals. And can you see the point that they're trying to make? I disagree what the Enterprise Minister was saying, because we're not after uh, support for just individuals. We're we're looking for support across the industry, uh, across our sector of the industry. And we've come up with proposals that will affect the the whole of the economy. There's no point in increasing the minimum wage if the tax legislation, uh, if the tax rates don't and threshold adjustments don't change in line with that. For somebody on the next proposed minimum wage, the fact that they're going to fall into the higher rate of tax is appalling. And it just shows you why should somebody be on the minimum wage and then have to play that higher rate of tax? You know, when there's a tax cap of £200,000 a year for the higher earners. So it, it is the government's job to come up with policies that support the economy and support the industry and they have to listen to the concerns of the industry. The LVA refuses to remain passive as businesses struggle and close and you know for the recent for example T-junction that's a very busy business and should be at least profitable and when you're losing established businesses like that and there's been concerns raised by the Victory Cafe on the mountain and there was a lot more concerns raised at the meeting you know we're not talking about small business that are are just failing they're operating and struggling because of the policies that the government have in place and because of the current economic climate so i i I would disagree it is the government's job to listen to the industry and come up to something to support the industry because without the industry we will not have any tourist trade we will not have jobs for young people to work and, you know, it'll be a sad state of affairs when people will only be able to go to Tesco's and McDonald's to eat and drink. Going back to you and your own business, how worried are you about the future of your business and being able to maintain it for the long term? It's very worrying. The current economic climate uh, dictates that everything is worrying, that, you know, they, they like, to, you know, there's wars happening and we don't know when the next big problem is coming. We, we took Brexit on the chin you know, without any input from the Isle of Man, then COVID happened, and then it's the wars, and then it's the increased energy, you know, the inflation situation, and what's next? So, you know, my business is operating, it's still suffering from the effects of COVID to try and stay afloat through those times, despite some help to our employees over that period, there wasn't much help for the actual businesses themselves. And 
you know, on a more personal note than even my business. You know, I'm a 40 year old man that's trying to get on the property ladder and I can't afford to, you know, it's, it's very difficult to save up for a deposit whilst also making sure you've got a buffer within a business that's going to help you survive. My name's Johnny McDowell. I'm the owner of the New Cotton Block Chip Shop in Oncom Precinct. As good as turnover and trade is, it's just the costs of everything is just unreal. I mean, Years gone by when certain things go up and you can absorb costs a little bit on certain things. It just seems to be everything has just gone up and it's not a few pounds. You're talking like 15, 20% on everything going up. You've got your rates going up, your bank charges going up, obviously your utility bills all going up. It's just crazy. Your profit margins are massively down. I mean, you're lucky to be staying just above water at the moment. It's that, it's, that's how hard it is. You know, you're juggling things about to just try and equate things to keep them going. I mean, staff-wise, obviously, you've got all the new minimum wages all going up. You've also got the brought in last year with all the young ones as well. Obviously, all their minimum wage up went drastically. So you've got a lot of young people now earning what I would say, you, you're thinking for pocket money, they're on decent salaries. And you're kind of like, you know, they're trying to be taught things through going like life skills and stuff like that. And you're paying them massive salaries. All of a sudden, you're paying out, it could be ridiculous, like you're like paying 50, 60 pounds an hour for three members of staff on. When it comes to staff as well, one of the issues that's been talked about across the island is about recruitment. And has that been much of an issue for you? It has. Recruiting the younger sort of generation isn't a problem. You can always get a lot of young ones interest in the job whether they stick to the job is a a different matter but when you're trying to recruit like experienced staff or people who might be interested in that this side of the business it's very hard at the minute you just can't find staff to do it I mean we're quite fortunate we have got two or three members of staff who are very good and we keep hold of them obviously we pay them quite a bit more than what the minimum wage is but all that adds into your costs I mean you're going to work and the hours I work personally obviously People might just see you in the shop, but the stuff you do behind the scenes as well, you sometimes think to yourself, is it even worth it? Have you thought recently about thinking, you know what, actually, I've had enough of this? <laughs> I've, I've thought a lot about it over the last, probably last year or so, yeah. I mean, you have the likes of Tesco paying people like 15, 16 pounds an hour for working through the night, and you're kind of like, there's no hassles, no stress whatsoever. And you're kind of like, well, is it worth doing what I'm doing, trying to run a business? putting everything into it and you're just paying everything out all the time. We obviously have put prices up to equate with the things that have gone up to try and cover that. But what you find is it'll get to a point where people just say like, well, I'm not paying that for that sort of food anymore. And, you know, it's more of a luxury now, like a little treat at weekends maybe, whereas before people might eat out twice in the week, whereas now they're only coming in maybe once a week. So you are feeling that way a little bit more because obviously they're going out, spending more themselves on their own personal shopping that you have to get for your house. So your sort of takeaway side or your meal sort of side is obviously having an effect on it all. This is something that is affecting the entire industry. What do you think would be a good way forward to try and help address some of these issues, which of course aren't just purely on the Isle of Man, they're affecting people across the globe. So Mm. what do you think the best way forward is to try and support businesses better? Well, the government really needs to have a look at themselves, if you ask me. I mean... What they kind of do sometimes when people come up with ideas, they just turn a cold shoulder to it. They're not even interested in even listening to things. So you're trying to put things to them and they're just not interested. I mean, the things that they could do is obviously the VAT. They need to look at the VAT because for every single pound that we take, people think if if we're charging five pounds for something, you know, you're paying 20 percent of that straight to the VAT. And then after that, you've got to cover your costs out of it. This week, funnily, timing-wise, the government is actually hosting these Listen to You roadshows and inviting people to come along and speak to them directly on a fairly informal basis to have conversations like this. Is this something that you're going to be doing or have you got the time to do it? If I can fit it in around my schedule, I will be trying to get to one of them to try and see who you can speak to or even if they'll listen to some of your questions. I can't complain. We have a good customer sort of base coming in all the time and... Our trade is good, but it's obviously just the cost of everything. And you kind of just like, it's so hard to try and balance it all the time. Tim Johnston is the Enterprise Minister. Our door is always open within within the Department of Enterprise and through a business agency to talk to hospitality businesses to understand what the challenges are. And they are real challenges at the moment. We, we, you know, we absolutely accept 
you know, the, the, the sort of tsunami of challenges that we've had over the last few years that, that really affected all businesses and hospitality especially. So we, we do recognise the real, the real challenges there are in that area. You know, f- from a department point of view, from a government point of view, it's important that we are looking to support wherever we can. But, you know, that, that support can't always be direct support. We've, you know, we, we saw a great deal of support through COVID when the economy was closed and we could do that. It's not something we can do in an open economy. We can't pick and choose individual businesses where we can offer direct support. But what we can do as a government through our agencies, for example, the visit agency, is ensuring that we're growing the, the, the visitor population. And we saw last year a much bigger increase than expected. An extra £20 million spent last year in the economy from the visit from the visitor economy. We're expecting record good numbers again this year, around 330,000. So it's important that we, we're doing what we can to get the footfall on the island to help these businesses succeed. But we accept it's been an incredibly challenging time. It's been a long winter. It's been, I think a lot of people, you know, haven't been getting out and about. That's, that's put extra pressures on. But we do what we can and we're happy to engage and listen. And certainly from the business agency's point of view, we've now got a new member who, who's there to, who, from the hospitality sector to make sure we're, we're making that engagement and talking to that sector. But we do offer support, business support through the business agency, free consultancy support for businesses. Because one of the things I know from my time as running a small business is you're so busy at the coal face, you're not of, often looking up and looking at your own business and deciding what, where, you, where are you going, what are you doing, and that, where we can help in that process, we will. Um, another big area we're working on now is a new local economy strategy. And again, it's gathering data to really understand what the challenges are and what we can then do as a government to really help in that area. Perhaps... Um, people in the food sector are already saying this and and many in the hospitality sector too Um, there may not be much left by the time these strategies reports and documents have been uh, finally signed off and agreed Um, do you do you not see that there is some level of urgency for more to be done by government and I think that's something, it's a fair point. And I think, again, part of this strategy is to understand what those challenges are, because <clears throat> it's very easy for us to make broad statements, but we've got to drill down, you know, on what are the real challenges, and, and they are mixed. And frankly, there are, there are other hospitality businesses that are still opening at the moment and growing. So it's, we've, got to, we've got to look at the bigger picture sometimes, understand why are those businesses that are thriving doing well, why are they doing that, and why are, are others struggling, and understand that broader picture we can't just go headlong in, into throwing money at, at the situation. We need to have a clear understanding of what the challenges are. And so that engagement is really important. That's what we do on a day-to-day basis, getting out, talking to businesses, understanding what the challenges are. That is absolutely key to what what we need to do. Um, but yeah, as I say again, I think again, as part of this strategy, it is to get that gather that data so we can look to offer more tailored support, but we can't do that you know, blindly. I think, I think that's the key. Chief Minister Alf Cannon was quizzed about the issues raised in the House of Keys. The Treasury Minister and the Enterprise Minister will be meeting with LBA on Monday. I'm really pleased that meeting's taken place. And look, uh, we absolutely uh, understand there is a number of pressures across our community at the moment. We know there's been huge impacts from this cost of living crisis we've been through, the impacts of inflation, impacts on mortgages. I recognise, of course, that small businesses, small enterprise, particularly our hospitality sector, wants the opportunity to, to succeed. We intend to give them as much support as we possibly can. But clearly our actions and any actions have to be proportionate and have to consider any further impacts that any of those actions would have on wider society, including the government income and tax receipts, of course, which is being used to support our frontline services, which are under increasing pressure as we know partly due to COVID and and partly because of changes in society at the moment. Can I ask what physical action is being considered to support the sector rather than just moral support? All these concerns are being expressed uh, across the hospitality sector in the United Kingdom. There have been repeated calls over the last couple of years to cut VAT, for example. A significant number of businesses across the UK in the sector are closing down and they are also facing exactly the same pressures as businesses over here. The Honourable Member will also know that that we have a customs and excise agreement with the uh, UK and that that agreement is hugely uh, valuable to us and plays an important part of our offering, our economic offering, and indeed an important part for, for government's income. 
So to some extent, you know, we need to keep ourselves aligned with what is happening across the water and to respect that agreement. What I would say is that we continue to uh, find different ways to promote uh, the sector. I think uh, one only looks uh, recently at the Department for Enterprise's very successful um, scheme in recognizing local produce. And part of this is about the entirety of protecting the taxpayers fund and the services that, that we're delivering. We need to put that into context, <coughs> of course, with ensuring that we have a framework, an economic framework, which is allowing businesses, not just in the hospitality sector, but across the island, um, to have that opportunity to succeed. And may I finally just want to raise, of course, I appreciate, you know, the hospitality sector is also having to, to battle somewhat of a transition in society where it seems that some changes are taking place in terms of the way that, that people are viewing hospitality. And, and um, I, of course, you know, one of the things that we must always seek to just help those businesses adapt where possible um, and, and try and reach out to, to new markets. Thank you for making it to the end of the Little Manx Radio newscast. You are obviously someone with exquisite taste. May I politely suggest you might want to subscribe to this and a wide range of Manx Radio podcasts at your favourite podcast provider so our best bits will magically appear on your smartphone. Thank you.